Hi guys, I'm Brooke Hoover. I'm a guitar teacher in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I was thinking of, well, on Tuesdays I'm releasing videos that are uh, geared towards beginning guitar players. Uh, I'd like to talk about the uh, picking or strumming hand. So if you're right-handed, that's your right hand. I think the most common uh, tool we're going to use is a, is a flat pick. A flat pick is this little triangular unit which you're probably familiar with. Um, I'm going to recommend you hold it on the side of your index finger and thumb. And you don't want to get it on the flat side of your finger like where the um, fingerprint is, don't go there, go more on the side. And another thing, you don't want it to slide up to these um, higher joints on your finger. You want it only on the first bone of your index finger. So your index finger will be curled, thumb comes in and touches it. You kind of make an okay sign like that. All right. Try not to let the pick hang way out. Tuck it in a little bit. That helps you control it more. All right, so that's a flat pick. You can pick down strokes, up strokes, or alternating down up, down up. I'll do some down strokes on the low E string like this. Those are down strokes. Up strokes would be the opposite. Just pick up towards the ceiling. And alternating picking is where you go down, up, down, up, like this. They actually have a little different sound. The down strokes seem to have kind of a, an aggressive, kind of pointed sound, like a kind of a chugging staccato aggressive sound but if you pick down up down up it can be a little more soft like that was down up down up versus the, all the downs rarely would I do a bunch of upstrokes in a row that just seems kind of weird but it's, you could practice it. So that's using a, a flat pick for picking. Um, what's tricky is when you're picking and changing strings. So let's say you're doing some basic notes like, which I picked down, up, down, up, down. That's E, F, G, F, E. And go to the second string, same shape. B, C, D, C, B. That's a good drill. So you might notice my <clears throat> picking hand is sitting on the bridge. I really like to do that. So I'm just taking my palm and letting it flop right there. If you've watched a few of my older videos, I'll I'll mention that that solves a lot of technical problems. So that's down up. If I do all down strokes, it sounds pretty cool, but I feel like I'm stressing out a little bit. try some all down strokes but I recommend the down ups for that kind of back and forth um, cool so that's using the pick for some uh, picking of notes single notes uh, you can try like a scale
just do a little pick and have a little fun. Uh, if you're strumming, downstrokes have that again that kind of aggressive. The downstrokes have kind of an aggressive staccato quality. Nice and consistent for like punk rocking. Something like that, you know, power chords. Um, if you do the down up, you can maybe swing it. So the down up can give you a swing. Swing feel. that feel with downstrokes it's possible I like the down up for that so if you're strumming chords sometimes just straight downstrokes sound really cool like those are like quarter notes one two three strokes but if you do down up it can swing a little bit um, if you're doing like cowboy chords like a G D A minor C G, D. just get that going like if you're singing uh, singing a song, you don't want to be thinking, you know, uh, you don't want to strum the words like, uh, when I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me. You don't want to strum the, the words. You want to keep this going like... strum going and keep it really measured um, one and two and three and four and you don't want to be speeding up or slowing down <clears throat> and that's why you really want to work with a metronome to get that solid feeling of timing let's just turn on the metronome and find a, a tempo that will kind of match Here's 70 beats a minute. So even though this is kind of irritating, you have to embrace what this is telling you. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna play along with that. Here I go. So, yes, the, the metronome, you know, I really didn't pursue the metronome. I used a drum machine for uh, recording, which helped me. When I started using a drum machine to record, I noticed I sound vastly more professional. Otherwise, I'm just, it helps you focus. Otherwise, you know, you speed up, slow down, lose focus, you know, run off and do something else. But this helps you zero in on the timing. So... That's a big deal. So yeah, when you use the pick and you do some strumming, 
try not to dig in super hard and bang into the strings and make when you hit the string really hard it, it's vibrating in like a ellipse or whatever and it's moving and it's it can hit the frets and make a rattle and give you like a real spiky sound that really irritates my ears it just sounds you can make a terrible nasty sound by punching the strings it doesn't sound good i don't think so i always try to get my students to lighten up you know give me some Get that softer touch. Don't be punching it. I beg my students, don't, you know. They just keep doing it over and over. And finally, I, I have to kind of like whack them over the head with a ruler or something. <laughs> After begging them for years. Okay, just soft is all you need. For most of the things you're doing, it's a pretty soft feel. When you dig in really hard, you just get a lot of buzz, a lot of like transient spikes. Uh, it's just not necessary. And once in a while for a special effect, you might, yeah, when it's time, you'll know when it's time to really dig in the pick on some certain notes, really want to emphasize. But it's kind of like shouting. If you shout all the time, nobody's going to want to be around you. So, yeah, that's what I think about how hard you should pick. Try to find, uh, maybe I'm going to try... The lights feel and in increase. And then decrease. Somewhere in the middle there, you, you is average, okay? Um, so Here's something, uh, <clears throat> the depth of the pick. If the pick goes in and hits like the face of the guitar, if you hear any sort of tick tock, that your, your pick is going way too far in. So you, remember the pick only barely touches the top of the string. You're just buzzing the top of the string. Don't dig in very deep. I mean, you know, you can always hit a little harder, but first at least understand that softer touch, okay? Cool. So those are just some ideas about using a pick. Um, side of the index with the thumb. Try not to get it. I don't like the, having the middle finger in there because you might need these fingers for some picking. You might use the pick and fingers. <laughs> I'm terrible at it. Shoot. That's called hybrid picking, and I'm lousy at it, but I'm going to work on it. Um, so, you know, I'm still learning too, and uh, we're all students. So, you know, even if you've played for a long time, <clears throat> Think of yourself as a beginner that you, so you're open for more, you know, new information. It's like a like a beginner's mindset is really cool. Just a way to think about it, you know, don't don't be above learning some real simple songs, melodies, you know, reviewing a simple scale, review your basic chords, make sure they sound good. I play them every day, you basic E A D G C uh Reviewing simple notes, patterns of notes, working on timing, quarter notes, half notes, eighth notes, anything simple. I like to work on that stuff myself. And, uh, you know, if you've got those fundamentals covered, then start moving on to more complicated things. All right, this is Brooke saying uh, thank you so much. 
if you could subscribe, that would be awesome. I love hearing the comments, reading the comments. Um, a thumbs up helps me a lot. You can share the video. Let me know if you have any ideas for videos that you'd like me to cover. And uh, we'll see you soon. Take care.